Stinger Four Star Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Do you expect serious competition in our tournament? Well, of course. I wouldn't minimize my victory before I've won it. Then you do expect to win. <laughs> I couldn't very well make such a statement to your newspaper, but you may say I'm confident. Uh, please, Mr. Abbey, one more picture, together with Lonigan. Oh, you don't want me. Sure. Oh, the champion and the tournament director. Thank you, gentlemen. That's all, Jack. Thank you. There's been a great deal of discussion about the exciting game you played in the National Bridge Tournament. Do you care to comment? I played as well as I could. That's putting it mildly. I'll get it. Oh, one more question, Mr. Abbey. We were a bit surprised that you came all the way from New York to play in our tournament. It's flattering to Seattle, but why did you come? I was invited. I accepted. Besides, I've wanted to visit Seattle for a long time. Alan, it's for you. Thank you. Excuse me. A woman who won't give her name. Oh. Hello? Yes, this is Ellen Abbey. Alan, don't mention my name. This is Julie Tolan. Alan, you remember me, don't you? Julie. Yes. Of course, I knew you lived here, but I admit I didn't expect you to get in touch with me. Well, how did you find out we moved? Oh, I've kept track of you, Julie. Word gets around in bridge circles. It wasn't difficult for me to follow Bert's progress from New Orleans to Kansas to Seattle. And yet you came? I travel a lot, Julie. Sooner or later, we were bound to meet again. I've been afraid of it. I've dreaded the day you and Bert would meet in the, the bridge tournament. Really? I forgot to look at the list of players. Is he competing against me? He was the favorite until you accepted. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. If you didn't know, it's not too late. You could still withdraw. Withdrawal? Why should I? You know why? After all that's happened between you two, it wouldn't be just a game. It'd be a deadly battle. Oh, no, no, Julie. Aren't you exaggerating a little? Not as far as Bert is concerned. Your success has become an obsession with him, Alan. He couldn't take a defeat. Well, in that case, perhaps he would like to withdraw. Bert? Never. He'd stake his life to win against you. He would? Too bad. You don't think he has much of a chance, do you? If I did, I wouldn't be here. I see. Is that why you called me? To ask me to let Bert win? I haven't yet. But you will. You're uncanny. The way you've always been able to read my thoughts, it's as frightening to me as ever. Ah, now, Julie. Alan, I'm desperate. You've got to help me. You can afford to be generous to Bert. You've got everything. Have I? Shall we say, everything except the woman I wanted to marry and couldn't, because Bert came between us. But he didn't. You can't hold it against him. It was my own choice. Just the same. Uh, how can you expect me to help the man who took you away from me? Don't you think you're asking too much? Maybe. Alan, if I ever meant anything to you, if you ever really loved me, you must have some feeling left. I'm not indifferent. Then you promise. No. I'll have to think it over. Couldn't you at least give me some indication? You've made your bid, Julie. Now you'll have to wait for the other players. Hey, darling, where have you been? Uh, at the store. I had to finish the inventory. Oh, quite a night. You know the Vickers have invited us for dinner at the club. Would you mind going on? Terribly tired. You mean you won't come to the tournament? Maybe later. You don't have to. If you're afraid to see me lose. But you won't. You're the favorite. Not anymore. Haven't you seen the papers? All the big stories about Alan Abbey? No, what about him? The champion has honored us by coming to Seattle. Really? 
Well, you don't seem very concerned. Well, should I be? Oh, come on, Julie, you don't have to put on an act. We both know what he means to us. Same to you. Don't tell me you've never thought about him. Don't tell me you've never wondered if he didn't marry the wrong man. That's absurd, Bert. Of course I haven't. Well, maybe you should have. Then you might have been spared the final humiliation of watching him beat your husband in this tournament. But you haven't lost yet, Bert. And even if you do, it won't prove anything. What better proof do you want that he's superior to me? Not as a person, Bert. It's only a game. It's just cards. No, it's not. It's the difference between success and failure. It's the reason you had to open that store. The reason we have no home of our own, no security. I don't care. I have you. You're all I want. You know, this cup isn't the only thing you've got at stake, Bert. Remember what my wife said about my factory needing an assistant vice president? Mrs. Vickers wasn't serious, was she? Sure, we both are. She, because she collects celebrities. She'll be thrilled to have a bridge champion working for me. You know, show him off at dinner parties. Well, I'm sure you'll be guided by more practical considerations. I am. A lot of out-of-town buyers play bridge. It'll be sound public relations. You win that cup and you're hired. Unfortunately, Mr. Vickers, the odds are against me. Well, never mind that. You just go in there and fight. I've got faith in you, Bert. Alan, I want you to meet Bert Tolan, our most brilliant player. I know. Bert and I are old friends. How are you, Bert? Hello, Alan. Yes, Mr. Lonergan, more than friends. Partners. We used to play as a team. Really? Whatever became of you, Bert? Well, gentlemen, we better go in. The tournament's about to start. Aren't you coming? You're a brilliant bridge strategist, Alan. But don't think that your success proves your superiority. For years, everything I've touched turned sour. You can't fight bad luck. I'm sorry, Bert. In the long run, there is no such thing as bad luck. In cards, any more than in life. You still say that if I win? Right in this room? Yes, Bert. I'd still have to say it. Or else discard everything I've lived by. Did you just drop in by accident? My dear Julie, I never do anything by accident. <laughs> I've known for a year that you had to open the store. I didn't have to. I enjoy it. It gives me something to do. You're a very proud girl, Julie. You'd never admit that you had to work to make up for Bert's losses. But it's not true. No use putting up a front. I know that your life with Bert has been one terrible struggle. Good times. But it wasn't Bert's fault. Was it yours, when he failed in business? When he loses one job after another because he stays up nights playing bridge? He's not a gambler. No, worse. A man obsessed by cards. I know the type. I've seen them in every club in the country. Fanatics. He'll get over it. They rarely do. What about you? You've made cards your career. Oh, no, Julie. Just the opposite. I use cards as my tools. That's the whole secret. I've tried to make Bert forget this obsession, but he won't. It's because of you. He thinks he has to prove himself against you. He'll never succeed, at any rate, not in bridge. Why not? You ended up even last night. 
What if he should win this tournament? Come, come, Judy, don't be a child. It's nothing against him. He, he just doesn't have the makings of a champion. Maybe not. Maybe he's too kind and warm-hearted a person. Maybe that's why I married him. We all make mistakes in life, Julie. No reason why we should lack the courage to correct them. It's not a question of courage. Nor of love, not anymore. I love Bert as much as ever. I don't believe it. Why, Alan? What, what is it to you? We're no longer important to you. Not Bert, but you, Julie. What do you suppose I kept track of you? You don't mean... No, that's impossible. Is it? What do you suppose I came to Seattle? Please, Alan, it's difficult enough. Too difficult. Julia, I want to see you happy. Surely you don't think that... Why? I... Wasn't always impossible? I admit I was drawn to you once, but just the same. Sorry to intrude. I didn't realize you used the store as a meeting place. We didn't. Alan just dropped in to buy a book. Indeed, a perfectly valid excuse, but I prefer not to use it. The fact is, I came to see Julie because she is still the only woman in my life. I see. I suppose you have a reason for telling me this. Yes, I have. It's only fair that you should know. Fair? Do you think it's fair to make it clear that you're still in the running when you have so much more to offer? Fame, success, glamour? Yes, Bert, it is fair. Because you had your chance to make Judy happy. It's still up to me. She doesn't concern you. I'm sorry, she does. No man who loves a woman would give her up without making certain she was happy. Looks bad, Judy. There are the figures. Abby's over 400 points and Bert's 360. Well, isn't it still possible for Bert to catch up? It's possible, of course, but most unlikely. It's not just the size of Abby's lead, it's his steady, constant increase of it. Alan, next round you're playing at table three with Bert as your partner. Uh, when do I get to play against him? Not till tomorrow afternoon. I wish you'd do me a favor. Could you arrange it for tomorrow evening, make it the very last round of the tournament? If you wish. I don't see that making a difference. It would, to me. Congratulations, Mr. Abbey. You're certainly proving that you're a great man as far as cards are concerned. How can you be so unkind? No, Alan, I'm not. I'm applauding you. You know only one thing, victory. Control yourself. People are watching us. Cigarette? No, thanks. Why should it be important to me to win another tournament? Do you know how many trophies I've got on my shelves? There's always room for one more. You'll never fail to find a bare spot. I don't have to look very far. There is a great empty space in my life. I'm sorry, Alan. I hope you don't think it's my fault. I didn't say that. Anyway, I don't propose to let cards decide the issue. I have other plans. What do you mean? Alan, they're waiting for you. Coming. Goodbye, Julie. Wait. What are you going to do? Tell me. Not now. But I assure you there are no loopholes. This time, the decision has to be final. Good evening, Judy. Bert's great. Just great. The way he came up from behind. Amazing recovery. What's the latest? Well, it's still a seesaw battle, but I have a hunch that Bert has the champion on the ropes. I hope you won't mind, but I have asked for a short recess. Of course, Alan. You're entitled to a rest. It's been a hard fight. Well, frankly, I wasn't prepared for these turn of events. Can't deny I'm a bit shaken. I've got to take hold of myself. He is nervous. The question is rattled. Julie, you shouldn't have followed me. Well, I had to. When I saw how upset you were, I felt guilty. Don't bother. I'm neither upset nor rattled. 
Merely putting on an act to justify my implausible defeat. Implausible? Of course. You don't think Bert can perform miracles, do you? But why? When did you decide to let Bert win? When? Oh, um, sometime after you pleaded for him. Or don't you remember your visit? Of course I do, but I'd just about given up hope. What made you so generous? The simple fact that losing suits my purpose much better than winning the tournament. Alan, what are you up to? I'll only make the first move. The rest must follow. Julie, I'm going to lose. And then I'm going to tell Bert that I have lost on purpose. Alan, you wouldn't. I'm sorry, Julie. It's my only chance to get you away from him. But you can't. You, you must know by now I'll never leave him. I do know. That's precisely the reason why I have to make him leave you. I don't know how you go about this. But I wouldn't be surprised if you succeeded. Except with me. I swear no matter what happens, I'll never come to you. I need you as much as Bert does. But I'm not strong enough to help you. That's why I'm telling you now while you can still turn back. I can't anymore. Within the hour, every news service in the country will carry the report of my defeat. I'm sorry, Julie. I've got to get back. Certainly kept us waiting. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Two clubs. Yes, Bert. Two clubs. Pass. I can hardly believe it. It's over. I won. Really? What's the matter, Julie? You look pale. Too much excitement. Bert, I wish you'd take me home. Well, you don't want me to leave right now. Please, Bert, let's go home. I don't want to see any people. You mean Alan? But it's all right, Julie. Now that I've won, we don't have to worry about him. In fact, I'd rather enjoy talking to him. Congratulations, Bert. I want to thank you for a most fascinating game. And may I add, I'm glad you won. Thank you, Alan. You're still the best sport I've ever known. Well, I've never cried over a lost battle. It's winning the war that counts. Alan, now that it's over, let's be friends again. Let me buy you a drink. I'd be delighted. To you, Bert. To victory and success. Or shall we drink to happiness? I don't think I could be happier, Alan. It's like starting life all over again. I've not only won the tournament, I've won a vice presidency in Vickers' business. Good. You certainly deserve a break. That's why when I heard about Vickers' offer, well, I just couldn't stand in your way. What do you mean, stand in my way? Hmm? Nothing. I wanted you to have it. Let's leave it at that. Darling, I, I wish you'd take me home. I have a terrible headache. No, wait a minute. Alan, how could you want me to have it when it was a question of winning? Forget it. Oh, come on, Alan. Are you trying to make me believe you didn't play your best game? What do you care? Be satisfied. You got what you wanted. I want the truth. Tell me. Now, look, Bert, it's, um, it's embarrassing. Uh, I told you I knew how much you had at stake. And believe me, it wasn't such a great sacrifice for me. You sacrificing anything? I wouldn't believe that in a million years. I didn't expect any gratitude from you. You're lying, Alan. You didn't intend to lose. Have it your own way? Oh, you never give up, do you? Even when you're down, you're still trying to turn the tables. Well, it won't work. I waited for this moment too long. I won't let you take my victory away from me. Keep it, please. Now, look, Bert, I'm not sufficiently interested in you. In fact, if Julie hadn't asked me, uh, Julie? What's she got to do with it? Why don't you ask her? He's lying, isn't he, Julie? Well, tell me he's lying. Bert. It's true. Well, Julie, how could you? Bert, if you'd just let me explain. There's nothing to explain. It's perfectly clear. All you did was destroy everything I fought for so desperately. You played straight into his hands. What do you think you're doing right now? 
Someday you'll find out when I'm no longer a part of this game. Julie. You almost had me, didn't you? Oh, you're incredibly smart, Alan. Now I do believe you could have won the tournament. You do? Any man capable of setting a trap as brilliant as that could have won hands down. Are you certain it was a trap? I even know how you set it. Step by step. If you'd merely beaten me, you'd have left me the hope of winning the next time. But this way, you not only evade my challenge, but put me in your debt forever. And who was responsible? My wife. How could I help hating her for pleading with you? She did. She called me. But I don't hate her for it. To the contrary, I think it's the most wonderful thing she could have done. The greatest proof any woman could give of her love. That's where you made your mistake. Very good, Bert. Well, I admit I didn't expect to be the one who'd bring you together. It would seem that the trap was not exactly infallible. No, almost. There was only one flaw in your otherwise superb calculations. Your old premise that people can be handled like cards doesn't work, Alan. Because there's something inside us that can't be manipulated. Bert, here it is. To the winner. I don't want it. What's going on? As usual, winner takes all. For a man accustomed to winning, you're certainly a good loser. I don't know. This time I found it a bit difficult. Perhaps because the stakes were so high. Julie, why didn't you wait for me? I had to get away. Anywhere. Before anything else I did got twisted by your brilliant mind. Julie, listen to me. No, Bert, I'm through. I don't want to apologize or explain. I'm a woman. I can't figure everything out with a mathematical mind. I can only do what I feel. With all our figuring, we didn't do half as well as you. What do you mean? <laughs> you made me realize how crazy I was trying to prove to you I could beat him when all the while it meant so little to you that you asked him to let me win. Darling, it really didn't matter. You don't have to be better than anyone else. I love you the way you are. May I come in? Of course, sir. Hello, Julie. You left in such a hurry, you forgot this. You know it's not mine, Alan. Besides, it's of no use to me now. I'm through with cards. Good. I'm very happy for both of you. But I came to tell you that the trophy is really yours. You won it. What do you mean? Well, you know I've never failed to pay up at the end of a game. The game is over. And the fact is, I actually lost to you, Bert. When I saw I couldn't win, well, I, I tried a little scheme. It didn't work. That's all. Forgive me. I knew it. Julie, did you hear that? Alan, I did feel all along, but I couldn't be sure. I'm grateful to you for not leaving any doubt in my mind, especially since this is my last tournament. I understand. Thank you, Alan. What I said to you at the club, I mean it so very much. You are a true champion. And what I said to you in your shop, I mean it so very much, too. All I wanted was to see you happy. Goodbye, Julie. 